Okay, so here's the lesson. 5-2, day one. Talk about ellipses with center 0, 0. Now, I didn't really go into this much, but if I show you the next day, you can see you've got a shift in the x direction for the center, shift in the y direction for the center. So, essentially, when you see that there is no, you know, x plus 2 squared or x minus 2 squared or something like that, your first clue is this and this is telling you the center is zero, zero. All right. So I start there. Now I want to build my ellipse. Now notice, Captain Obvious moment, what number is bigger, 16 or 7? Well, 16 is. So remember, that means that this, if you watch the pre-lesson, that means a squared equals 16. If we take the square root of that, we get a is 4. Now be careful. This is the distance we're going to travel along the x-axis in both directions. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Because that's my a. That's going to be my major axis. And then it gets a little weird. That 7 makes things a little miserable, but oh well. Deal with it. Take the square root. Take the square root. Now, I could, well, let's go ahead and do it. Let's just take the, uh, the old calculator, and let's take the square root of 7. There it is. Second square root 7, enter 2.6. Okay, found that on the old calculator there. And so that means we're just going to go about, you know, a little past half. As you can see, it's not going to be perfect. So then I'm going to draw it in there. Now remember, this is not a circle, so it should end up looking somewhat elliptical, like an eyeball, and it does, or an egg. But it says, find the center. All right, we found it. What are the vertices? Well, the vertices are the endpoints of the major axis. So we're going to go ahead and call it what it is. It's 4, 0, and then that's negative 4, 0. And then it says, and find the foci. Remember, the foci are always on the major axis, which is huge. And in this case, that happens to be the x-axis. And we're going to use the formula, a squared minus b squared equals c squared. a squared is the original largest number underneath whichever variable it happens to be under, but it's 16. Minus the smaller of the two, 7, equals c squared. So 9 equals c squared. So we take the square root, and we get 3. But wait, that means i got to go this way, 3, and i got to go that way, 3. So that means this right here is 3, 0. And this one right here is negative 3, 0. So that one worked out pretty good for the full sign. Okay, and let's move on to the next one. So this one's a little different. Now they rearrange this. They put the Y in front of the X, but really what you need to concentrate on is which number is bigger. Of course, 36 is bigger than 27, so that makes that the A squared, which means A is 6. And I travel along the Y axis, which is this, 6 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's my major axis. Then I know that this 27 is b squared, so b squared is 27. Take the square root of that. Now, some of you might be going, oh, that's 3 square root of 3. Yeah, you're right, but we're graphing right now, so we really want to know what this is. And so we're going to go square root, second, square root, 27. 5 point, we'll call it 5.2. Not that it really matters because we're not going to be that accurate with it. But 5.2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then a smidge. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then a smidge. And then we go like this. And like this. And there it is. Now, center, we know it's 0, 0 because there's no shift, no shift. Vertices. Well, that's going to be 0, 6, and 0, negative 6. So 0 plus or minus 6. Remember, those are the endpoints of the major axis. Foci, we've got to use our formula. Um, it's right here. 
So we'll just use it here. So a squared means the larger of the two denominators, which is 36, minus b squared, which is 27, equals c squared. So once again, we get 9 equals c squared. So we take the square root, we get c is 3. But this time, remember the major axis always has the foci on it, and in this case, it would be the y-axis. So that would be up 3, down 3, and now you just need to name them. So that'd be 0, 3. That'd be 0, negative 3. All right. So now notice what we're doing. We're going from equation to graph, equation to graph. And we're labeling some things. Now they're going to give us somewhat of a puzzle, give us a picture, and they, they're asking us to find the equation. Well, it says the major axis length 6. You know what that's saying? A is 6. And it's on the y-axis. So already I'm getting some big clues. Whoops. I made a mistake there. I didn't mean a is 6. a is 3, which means I go up the y-axis 3, 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, and I can stop right there and say, you know what? This is going to be y squared over 9, because remember, it's y squared over a squared, because the major axis is going to represent a, and it's got to be underneath the y, plus x squared now, I know that the center is 0, 0, um, so therefore it's not going to be shifting here. So then it says the minor axis is length 6. Where did that come from? 4. So I go out 2, out 2, pull a dot, pull a dot. And so now I know that B is 2. Um, and I square this to figure out what to put here. And there it is. Now, it didn't say to graph it, but I did. So let's go ahead and draw it in there. Notice the major axis is here. And that's good because we've got the larger number underneath the y squared. Okay, next one. Foci plus or minus or two, plus or minus 2, comma 0. 1, 2, 1, 2. Do not forget what these are. Okay. Um, in the pre-lesson, I talked about a string. That's where the string would be, you know, this lazy little string, and then you connect it with the utensil. But um, anyways, that's a major clue. That's telling you that C is 2, but it's also telling you the major axis is your X axis. So I know it's going to be X squared over A squared plus Y squared over B squared equals 1. Now look at this little clue. The major axis is length 10. So that means it would look like, so my foci are always on my major axis, so 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, and at least I can see that this is 5, which is A, and I would need to square that to put it underneath my X, so I'd get X squared over 25 plus Y squared equals 1, so I know that this is A squared. So I need to figure out what b squared is. And so with that in mind, I know that c is 2. I know that a is 5. And I know this formula, a squared minus b squared equals c squared. Now watch this. So a squared is 25 minus b squared equals c squared, which is just c squared. So that would be 4. So if I subtract 25, subtract 25, I would get negative b squared equals negative 25. So positive b squared equals positive. Oh, make some mental errors. So this should be negative 21. Um, so negative b squared equals negative 21. So I make those both positive. And so I know that b squared equals 21. Now a lot of people would just go, all right, I'm going to take the square root. But remember, we want b squared underneath there. So we're done. Just put that 21 right there. And we're done. There's the equation of that information. All right. Full size, 0 plus or minus 5. All right. So I'm going to make these small. 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's huge. Two clues. Number 1, C is 5. Number two, so here's clue number one. Clue number two, my y is my major 
axis because the foci are always on the major axis. What does that tell me? It tells me it's going to be y squared over a squared plus b squared, excuse me, x squared over b squared equals 1. So look at this. My major axis length is 16. That's just a way of telling you that a is half of that. So I know that if this is 5, I'd go 6, 7, 8, 6, 7, 8, and my, my ellipse would look something like this. So I kind of have an idea what's going on. So I know that C is 5, and I know that A is 8. And so look at it. If A is 8, I'm going to square it, and I'm going to put Y squared over 64 plus X squared over, again, i got to find B squared. And I'm going to use my knowledge of C and my knowledge of A, plugging it into this formula. So here we go. A squared would be 64 minus B squared equals C squared, which in this case would be 25, because C is 5. I'm going to subtract 64, subtract 64. Negative B squared equals negative 39. So I'd multiply both sides by a negative. So I'm not going to take the square root, because I want B squared down there, and I have B squared equals 39. So I'd be done. See what we got on the back side? Nothing. All right, good luck on your homework.